Oscar, you picked the perfect match to host at the forum. Do you think this is the, you know, the fight style-wise that reminisced to the old fights at the forum? I, I, I truly feel this fight uh, will, will live up to, to the expectations, first of all. I, I strongly feel that the forum has, has brought out a lot, of, um, a lot of great fights and a lot of great fighters. I mean, you name it, from, from Muhammad Ali to, to myself. Um, we've stepped inside that ring and there's something different about the forum that is, uh, that is special and uh, to, to showcase um, Alexis Rocha against an undefeated fighter who is, who, who on record is, is and on paper is, is, is a tough, tough contender. Um, it, yeah, it's, it should be, it should be, uh, it should be one for the ages. It should be one, one for LA, one of those fights that uh, a lot of people will, will remember. When you go to the forum, you make your pro debut, of course, there. What are the emotions that just go through your head every time you go into that arena? Yeah, you know what, I've, lately I've been to concerts, and um, it's, it's uh, yeah, it brings back a lot of beautiful memories, you know? Um, I can, the one thing I do remember is, uh, the most, is Ricardo Montalban, when I dropped, Lamar Williams and he stood up and put his hands up Ricardo Montalban the, the actor mm -hmm. that's the one image I get in my head all the time when I think about my pro debut mm -hmm. it's pretty it's pretty special um, uh, yeah the, the forum brings out all the stars which is pretty cool this is the also the third fight in a row Alexis is headlining now you see yeah. I think he kind of had a the bad luck with Virgil Ortiz, he kind of had his moment last year when he headlined that card last minute. Um, do you feel like you have the next star in Golden Boy and Alexis Rocha? Yeah, look, we, we, um, we're we just doing what we do best, and that's you know promote our fighters and, and get them to that position um, to, to, to have an opportunity and fight for a world title. Rocha is right there, he's knocking on the door. And we have a WBO convention coming up where Crawford will be making his decision whether he's moving up to 154 or staying at 47. Therefore, the, 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 the belt will either become vacant or, uh, or he will stay and fight um, at 47. And the decisions up to up to Paco, whether Rocha is next in line to to fight for that world title mm -hmm. with with Crawford, depending on what he what he decides. Do you like what the WBO is doing with this new super uh, division, the super champion <laughs> designation? They did with uh, Teofimo, and yeah. it seems like a few other top ranked fighters are following suit right now. I, I know you've been very vocal about the world title picture, and it continues to kind of get muddied again. Sure. How do you feel about? Perhaps not even opening doors for your fighters, though. All right, here we go. Here we're really get controversial now. All right, <laughs> here we go. So, um, I, 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 I just do not agree with the world titles. I do not agree. With the exception of the Ring Magazine belt, which is technically not an official, you know, belt to... to, to in many people's eyes. I mean, it's the most prestigious, goes back a hundred years and there's no politics whatsoever. You're either the champion and you win it in the ring against the number one, number two guy. Um, and, and that's it, you know? And the only way you can lose it, and we have the editor in chief here, um, you know, is in the ring. That's it. So, I look. I I have to play ball with the organizations because they, you know, they give title chances. They position you top ten, but when you start playing with super champion, when you start playing with 
super duper champion you know it's like it becomes it becomes confusing to the to the to the audience to the to the to the fan who supports the sport and nobody knows who the champion is and and that and that there is is is, is not good for the sport you know so you know when you have a Teofimo Lopez who is a great champion don't get me wrong but now is exempt from fighting his number one mandatory his the next guy in line to that can possibly beat him you know he's exempt from it like so are you a champion or are you not a champion you you have to defend your titles it's 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 been changing over the years and i just do not agree with it and i have every right to say that i do not agree with it because i was in the ring i stepped inside the ring myself and i don't agree with that as a promoter I don't have to agree with it, but guess what? Sometimes you have to, you know, walk in the park with these guys. You know, sometimes you have to play ball with these guys. But I, as a fighter, I just do not agree with it. Oscar, háblanos en español para esta gran función de octubre 21, uh, encabezada por Alexis Rocha y Giovanni Santillán. ¿Qué es lo que puede esperar la afición del boxeo? Fíjate que es una es una gran pelea. Este, la verdad que estoy Estoy este, sorprendido un poco de que ambos tomaron la pelea, porque es una pelea difícil para ambos. Eh, Giovanni, eh, yo, yo, yo he seguido su carrera por ya bastante tiempo. Yo, obviamente, su estilo es un estilo, un estilo agresivo, un estilo que, que viene a pelear, ¿no? Eh, y se conocen muy bien, Giovanni y, y Alexis Rocha. Eh, así que. Esta pelea desde, desde el Forum en Los Ángeles, eh, el ambiente, creo que les va a sacar a ambos peleadores eh, ese, ese coraje ¿no? para darles una buena pelea. Esta es la tercera ocasión que Alexis encabeza una cartelera tuya. Eh, ¿Lo ves tú como el próximo gran estrella de Golden Ball? Pues fíjate que nosotros, nosotros estamos solamente pos, 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 posicionando a, a Alex Rocha eh, para un título mundial. Este, Alex Rocha, él tiene la oportunidad, sí, de coronarse campeón mundial muy pronto. Eh, él es número uno del mundo actual. Eh, tenemos una situación con Terence Crawford. No sabemos si va a subir de peso a las 154 libras o 147. Eso esperemos eh, eh, en la próxima convención de la OMB. Y, y veremos a ver si Crawford se queda o no. Pero esta pelea sí va a ser una pelea muy interesante porque el ganador obviamente va, va a pelear por un campeonato mundial. El, el hecho de que la pelea sea en, en un, icono, un lugar icónico como el Forum... Mm -hmm. ¿Para ti qué significa como boxeador eh, algún recuerdo en especial, algo que te llegue a la mente? Sí, la verdad que yo peleé mi primera pelea en el Forum como profesional eh, y le estaba comentando que el único momento que yo me recuerdo es de Ricardo Montalbán, el gran actor, eh, cuando tumbé a Lamar Williams, subió las manos, se paró y gritó, campeón. Eso me recuerdo y es, es unos momentos muy bonitos. Ricardo era una, un fan mío y, y le gustaba el boxeo mucho. ¿Qué tan sorprendido estás con el progreso que ha tenido Alexis Rocha? En, en, en estos Fíjate años? que él tomó el paso hace, hace como dos peleas. Creo que fue una pelea en el YouTube, en el YouTube Theater, en donde demostró, donde demostró la quijada, demostró pegue, aguante, demostró todo en esa pelea, era una pelea fuerte, difícil, me, 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 recuerda, me recordaba, <coughs> el contrincante me recordaba a Ike Corte, fuerte, con un jab, este, quijada, este, mucho corazón, y esa pelea me demostró que Alexis Rocha está, está solamente aprendiendo, aprendiendo, creciendo, y, y y ahora es el momento de, de, de Rocha. Ahora es el momento de coronarse campeón mundial, pero 
el contrincante no va a ser fácil, no va a ser fácil para, para Rocha, es una pelea difícil, fuerte, pero eso es lo que queríamos, porque el forum, el forum y la gente, el público se merece ese tipo de pelea. You've been very successful. What's up, brother? I'm good. Good to see you. How are you okay, feeling today? My man, my man. Beautiful day. It's not cheap making fights in California. No. There's a lot of taxes, but yeah. you still do it. Yeah. You could go somewhere else and do it for way cheaper. So why, why bring all the fights here? Look, I, I've, I've, um, I've had a mission for a while now, and that's to bring back boxing to LA. Yeah, it's not easy, like you mentioned. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, we are talking to. Uh, the California Commission, we are talking to politicians um, sure. to hopefully change that um, in order to bring more fights here because it, every fight, every big fight is obviously in Las Vegas. Every fight now is taking place overseas in New York, Texas, Texas now Arizona. Um, so, you know, the fact that we're LA based, the fact that I was born and raised here, I, I want to be able to showcase a lot of these young fighters uh, like Rocha, um, you know, and, and fights like uh, William Cepeda and Hesta the other night, which was an amazing fight. Um, you know, I want to keep that tradition here. You know, I want to keep that tradition and, 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 and continue bringing the best, you know, fighters and fights, uh, you know, to, to, to LA, to California. You almost had a flawless career as a fighter. Going back, if you had to start being a promoter from day one, what would you do different? As a promoter, do different? Um, okay. As a promoter, do different. Um, you know, I think, I, I truly feel that we've been, we've been on the right track ever since the beginning, you know? It's like, yeah, people always ask me, what would you change from your career? I wouldn't change anything. I mean, it's, it's, you know, my career was what it was, and I'm happy with it. Win or lose, everything happens for a reason, right? So as a promoter, I think everything we've been doing um, has, been, has been correct. Everything we've been doing, you know, is, is building fighters and, and doing the best job possible. So, you know, for these kids, giving them the opportunity you know, so I, I don't think I'll, I would change anything. I mean, there's a lot of things I can change in boxing that I would love to, but it's not my it's not my job like to what? do so. I mean, you know, there's just uh, the judging, for instance. It's crazy. The judging is crazy. I don't know how. I, I I do understand that if it's a close round, you're gonna get your your controversy, whatever. Because look, judges are human. You know, and they're gonna make mistakes, or they're gonna favor a style. They're gonna favor the aggression. They're gonna favor. Um, it's. I think there should be some kind of like retraining for all judges, and maybe get these younger kids to to come in and 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 judge fights. You know, maybe you're twenty twenty five years old, thirty years old, instead of you know sixty, seventy, eighty. You know. Makes a big difference. Oscar, do you see a stoppage in this fight? I I see, yeah, I do, I do, I do. I, I see, I see one of those classic fights. Um, you know, I see one of those classic fights. Two two Californians going at it at a you know historical venue like the Forum. Um, I can see one of those classic LA you know fights against San Diego. Um, um, Rocha with one loss and his opponent with is undefeated. It's it's gonna be, it's gonna be a classic war, a classic alley war at the Forum. So it should be fun. Oscar, you talked about bringing a lot more fights to Los Angeles. Is, is Ryan Garcia's next fight gonna be in Los Angeles by any chance? We're uh, we're currently now working on a, on a venue, but again, like you mentioned. You know, California taxes are are, are just are, are are killing us, and so it just all depends. It depends on the opponent. It depends on uh, on what Ryan wants. We'll be talking to him shortly, and um, but we're we're gunning for, I believe, November eighteen, um, live on the zone, and uh, 
Yeah. Hopefully it will be in LA, but you know, we don't know yet. I know the zone has that Diego Pacheco fight on the 18th at the YouTube theater. Is that perhaps going to be a, a conflict with the zone or? Um, the zone has been doing a lot of like double programming mm. fights during the day. And then the, the main fight at night, kind of like a, a lead in mm -hmm. to the main fight. So, um, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the zone's plan is to, uh, to make sure that the fans get a lot of boxing on that on that day and that night so yeah should and be should be a good a good day have, for boxing who have you targeted for the opponent for Ryan? uh not yet i i can't mm -hmm. i can't really say anybody or else they add another zero behind the uh, <laughs> negotiation <laughs> so <laughs> um um but yeah no we'll get a top guy i mean look ryan garcia is coming off a, a loss He's coming off a knockout loss, and so me as a promoter, we have to, you know, make sure what's best for his career and and uh, match him up correctly and uh, bring him back and uh, and then go after the the big guns. Oscar, tú eres uno de los grandes responsables de grandes peleas en Las Vegas, en fechas importantes para la afición mexicana. Obviamente tuviste una muy buena función aquí en, aquí en Los Ángeles. Eh, UFC el, este pasado fin de semana tuvo también una muy buena función ahí en, en Las Vegas. ¿Crees que existe algún eh, peligro de que el boxeo pierda esas fechas importantes a, a UFC en Las Vegas? No, no tengo ningún, ninguna preocupación. Este... Lo que sí estoy confundido es de que por qué no Canelo peleó en esas fechas. Obviamente la comisión de Las Vegas va, va a querer a Canelo mejor que un, una función de UFC. Uh -huh. El boxeo siempre va a ser, va a ser la prioridad para, para la comisión eh, en cualquier estado. Eh, yo creo que Canelo peleando o, o la estrella del momento peleando en esa fecha siempre va a tomar prioridad eh, en cualquier estado. Así que no hay, ningún, no, no hay ninguna preocupación. Yo creo que UFC hizo lo bien de, de, de tener esa cartelera uh -huh. en Las Vegas para los mexicanos y, y las fiestas. Y eso, eso trae mucho orgullo, ¿no? Y, y eso, eso lo, lo hicieron muy bien. Pero, no, pero el boxeo siempre va... Si tenemos una estrella como el Canelo, o como un Ryan García, que es el próximo, um, o Jaime Munguía, el boxeo siempre va a ser, eh, siempre va a ser este, la prioridad. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We can start with the press conference in three minutes.